We'll start section 5.4 by, review, by reviewing the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. And of course, here it is. The fundamental theorem of calculus that we studied in section 5.3 tells us that the integral, the indefinite integral, of f of x dx is capital F of x plus c, where capital F prime of x is equal to little f of x. In other words, where f, capital F, is any antiderivative of little f. So our problem of integration will no longer be where we try to find find area. We, we instead will be looking for antiderivatives. Now some antiderivatives are very easy to find because you know your derivatives. For example, if we ask the integral of uh, cosine x dx, you know that that will be sine x plus a constant because the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Or another very simple one, the integral of e to the x dx will be e to the x plus a constant because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But most of our problems are going to be more complicated than this. So before we look at some, let's review the chain rule. The derivative with respect to x of f of u of x. We did this uh, last week. The derivative is f prime of u of x times u prime of x. So this tells us then that the integral of f prime of u of x times u prime of x dx is equal to f of u of x plus a constant. So our task will often be to just try to recognize a form like this. Try to recognize the chain rule in reverse recognize f prime of u of x times u prime of x dx, we'll have to find out what u is and be able to recognize its derivative. And uh, look at one example before I even uh, explain this or define anything else. Look at the example of uh, how about the cosine of 3x times 3 see what the u is and what the du or the, the, the derivative? Here, if u is equal to 3x, you know that the derivative u prime is equal to 3. So here we have it, the cosine of u of x times u prime of x dx. And the derivative, of course, will just, I mean, the, the antiderivative will be sine of 3x plus a constant. So those are not too difficult to recognize. It, it, it does get more difficult than that, but our goal is to try to recognize these, these patterns. So we're going to simplify our notation some, and this is, this is a very important definition. If u is a function of x, the differential of u, the differential of u is called du, and du is the derivative u prime of x times dx. Now what we had written before was this on the last slide. We had the integral of f prime of u of x times u prime of x dx is equal to f of u of x plus a constant. And we looked at an example or two. Okay, look how we can simplify that now. The u prime of x dx, that is simply du. And we'll just call this f prime of u with the understanding that u is a function of x. So if we can look at something as f prime of u du, it's much easier to see the antiderivative is f of u plus a constant. So our challenge will be to look
look at integrals and try to identify a u such that the expression will simplify itself to exactly this, f prime of u du. So we're going to just look at some examples. The best way to learn this, I think, is just looking at examples. Remember how I asked you to memorize the derivatives in terms of u rather than x? Well, this is why, is so that we can uh, integrate using kind of the reverse of the chain rule. Look at this first. We know that the integral of sine u du is minus the cosine of u plus a constant because the derivative of minus cosine is sine. So this is one of the integral formulas that I would expect you to know right away. You need to know these by heart. So let's, let's look at what we have here. We have, obviously, if we hope to make this fit this pattern of sine u du. If we want to turn this into sine u du, there's only one choice of u. It has to be x squared. And so du, its differential, is 2x, its derivative, dx. Don't forget to write the dx. So let's see if we can just rewrite this. Just move things around a little bit. You know that a times b is b times a. We can move factors and put them where we want. See, we have the sine of x squared. And then we have an x dx that's left over here as factors. Well, all we're missing is a, is a factor of 2. So I can, I can supply that. I can just put in a factor of 2 and multiply it over on the left of the integral sign by 1 half. Because you remember, that the integral of k times a function is k times the integral of the function. You can move constant factors, not factors involving x, but constant factors. You can move them to the left or the right of the integral sign. So look, if I move that 1 half in there, what did we just multiply by? Really, just 1. So now I see this as the integral 1 half the integral of sine of u du. Sine u du. And we know that that is going to be then 1 half times minus, I'll put that out to the left, the cosine of u plus a constant. Putting it back into terms of x, minus 1 half the cosine of x squared plus a constant. When you really get good at this, you you won't even have to write this intermediary step here. You'll always write u is x squared, hoping I would get the integral of sine u du. Well, sure enough, du was 2x dx, and we had the factor of x, we had dx, all we needed was a 2. So we could make up for it to the left of the integral, and we could go immediately to this step as soon as you see it. You can just see this as the integral of sine u du is minus cosine of u plus a constant. So here's another uh, derivative that we know very well how to differ using the power rule. And so this states the power rule uh, as an integration formula uh, backwards. The integral of u to the n du is 1 over n plus 1. 1 over n plus 1 times u to the n plus 1. So notice you raise the exponent by 1 and you multiply by its reciprocal. Sometimes, in fact, most of you have probably seen this written as u to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Well, you know, plus a constant. And of course that's true, but lots of times that n plus 1 is a fraction, and you don't want to put fractions down in the denominator. So just remember the words, raise the exponent by 1 and multiply by its reciprocal. So we look at this example here, and you see that this is the integral of, uh, well, I think I'll write it as 1 plus x squared to the 
the differential of u is 2x times dx. And sure enough, we have the x. That's all we really need. We have the x dx. So we give ourselves a factor of 2 and to multiply by its reciprocal on the left of the integral sign. And this just turns into turns into one-half the integral of u to the one-third du. To integrate that, I keep my one-half, and I'm going to raise the exponent by one. One-third plus three-thirds is four-thirds, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of four-thirds. And add a constant. So now we'll derivative that you know is the derivative of the natural log is 1 over u du, or 1 over u. So here we have another integration form that you should know. So let's see, let's look at this example. Um, here, often you, you let u be so let's try. Let's just try and see what we get. If u is 1 plus x squared, du is equal to 2x dx. Now look at what we have there. We have the integral. Just try to rewrite it. Move factors around. We have 1 over 1 plus x squared. That's our 1 over u. And over here we have an x that I moved off the numerator it over here with the dx. And you can see, yes, all I need is a factor of 2. So if all you need is a constant factor, just give it and make up for it to the left of the integral. If you needed extra factors of x or something, then this, this just wouldn't have worked. I'll show you an example right after this. Uh, so this, I'm just going to do this really really fast. It's 1 over u du, so my answer will be 1 half times the natural log of, I don't need absolute value because 1 plus x squared is always positive, 1 half the natural log of u plus a constant. Now, let me just mention, if, if 
if we had had this problem as, uh, oh, let's say, x squared over 1 plus x squared dx, you would have tried probably the same thing, tried to let u be the denominator, but you would find that you had here the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared, 1 over u, but sitting out here with your dx, you have two Therefore, this, this form does not fit this integral. We can't use the same thing, and we give up on, on this integration pattern. It's not going to work. So we would have to figure out another way, and we will in a, in a future chapter. We'll, I'll show you how to integrate those. Right now, we're just worried about ones where you can make a substitution, u, and all you need to do is multiply by a constant in order to get the differential of u in, into the integrand. Here's another uh, form that you should know. You know that the derivative of arctangent u would be 1 over 1 plus u squared times du dx. So the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared du is arctan u. So Let's see, this example will fit this one. It gets a lot harder when you have to, uh, you don't know which pattern it's going to fit here. I'm giving you an example that fits this integration form. So 1 plus u squared, well, obviously u would be e to the x, so that u squared is e to the 2x. u squared is equal to e to the x, squared is equal to e to the 2x. So du, that works on the bottom, du is uh, the derivative of e to the x, e to the x dx. So let's rewrite this. We have the integral over 1 plus, 1 over, I mean, 1 plus e to the 2x, and next to it we have e to the x with dx. And sure enough, that's exactly what we need. This is du, and this is 1 over 1 plus u squared. So I can rewrite it if, if we want, the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared du is equal to arctan u plus a constant. Go back into terms of x, arctan of e to the x plus a constant. Notice, if you recognize these patterns, though, you just look here and you see 1 over 1 plus u squared du is arctan u. You can go straight to this step here. Once you get comfortable with this, these are the other three integration forms that you'll need to know, and that's it uh, for the whole course. You're just going to need to know eight or nine integrals, and uh, they all come straight from the derivatives that you already learned in Calculus 1. Now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to write an example underneath each one, and I'm going to do it without writing out anything uh, except. Let's say we had the integral, let me change color. Say we had the integral of the cosine of 3x dx. Let's 
if you saw the integral of O um, dx over the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. Well, this looks suspiciously like this, doesn't it? The square root of 1 minus something squared. But what's being squared? Uh, well, it would be 3x, wouldn't it? U would be 3x, because u squared is again, du is 3 dx. So, if I just give myself a 3 up here on the top, give myself a 3 and a 1 third, then what I have is 1 third the integral, and I could leave the du on top, or bring it out to the right, it doesn't matter, square root of 1 minus u squared, which will give me then arc sine u one-third arc sine u arc sine 3x plus a constant. And one more example and that's it. We'll finish uh, this section with a, a, a different video with a little more difficult examples. We know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared so this is an easy formula for you to remember. And let's say we were given Secant squared, um, secant squared of, oh, let me do a tricky one, square root of x, and let's say underneath that we had, This looks a little bit hopeless, maybe, when you first look at something like this, but we would try. We see secant squared there on the top, so we could write this as a secant squared of, I think I'd write x to the 1 half, since I'll be looking at its derivative. Now I'm going to put all the rest out here with dx. I have 1 over the square root, which is x to the minus 1 half dx. Oh, that's looking good already. Look, if u if u is equal to x to the one half, and we have secant squared u, then du, its differential, is one half x to the minus one half dx. And so this is going to work. All we need is a constant factor. So I'll put my one half giving me my d du, I need to make up for it with the reciprocal. So I have 2 times the integral of secant squared u du, which is tangent u. So I have 2 tangent square root of x plus a constant. So that's it. I'm going to give you some